Wonderful morning to our viewers across the world. It's Ayo Adams on a sports segment of the weekend show. While it might have been uh, a crazy turn of events in Nigeria with the whole first top CD and what the National Assembly people said, but you know, Nigeria sports joins and brings us together, and which brings me to how the girls have been performing across the world. It's just been the girls. First of all, it was the Desigres who um, defeated um, DR Congo in their opening encounter, 69-35, defending their Afro Basket um, Championship with um, coach um, Rina Wakama doing our best. There were kudos to the um, basketball girls in um, performing their duties for the nation. But then let's move straight to what we have today. The Super Falcons of Nigeria really, really did um, themselves fall at the ongoing FIFA Women's World Cup as they defeated the Matildas of Australia, one of the top 10 teams in the world, three goals to two. In an historical way, Nigeria has never won a game that they've gone um, a goal down before, but they came back to win that game, three goals to two, with a spectacular display um, with Uche Nakano, um, Oshuala Azizat, Ajiba De Rashidat, and a lot more others, with Roundy Waldrum, you know, getting his tactics correctly. Well, coming back to review the Super, Super, Super Falcons um, uh, encounter against the Matildas of Australia is Ayoti Ogala. He is the um, founder of Eagles Tracker. Um, he's joining us live from Canada. Good morning, Ayo. Can you hear me? Good morning. Oh, wonderful. Ayo, you know, good morning, Ayo. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good morning to you. All right. And so, so let's let's get straight into it. I, uh, you know, um, last week when we, while we were talking about the Super Falcons, you know, we made some really uh, um, remark, really great remarks on their first encounter against Canada. How they displayed, how they played, how they reacted to um, the the game um, overall as as a whole. We discussed about the return of Rashid Jatajibadi and the return of Oshuala, but let's focus on the on the general performance of the Super Falcons. You know, they came from a goal down. They considered in the uh, in the closing uh, in the closing minutes of the first half. And immediately they responded with, you know, from an unlikely source, which in Akano, who has probably had one of the worst games so far in the first half. But Ajibade Rashida, you know, she glided through, pushed that attack, deflection came off the defenders, and, you know, Uchi Nakano slotted the goal in before the, the, the Super Falcons picked up their pace um, across the whole game. Give me a general assessment about that game overall. You know, there were a number of players who were also spectacular in that game, actually. Plumta, Alozie, Payne, uh, Christy Uchebe, uh, Ohale. You know, generally, how, do, how, was the, how was the performance against the Matildas for you? You know, um, I, I have to say it was it was a very pleasing performance. It was a very good display by by the Super Falcons. Um, honestly, I wasn't surprised because I know the kind of players that we have and the kind of quality that we have. But um, it takes another thing to to do it on the day and to perform at that kind of level. Um, I was especially pleased by the fact, like you just mentioned, you know, they considered a goal on the stroke of halftime. And one would have thought that maybe it could have been the way that the game would get, you know, away from us. But they showed the desire and the ability to be able to equalize even before the half ended. And I know that they went into that halftime break, you know, feeling very motivated. And then they came out in the second half, were clinical in attack on like the Australians and were able to take our chances and provide a positive result. Um, like you mentioned, of course, Rashida Dadibadi was, was crucial for us in that game. Um, it was it was a very good performance, honestly. And to beat a side that um, based on FIFA rankings, you know, on paper, they are ranked about 30 places ahead of us. It shows the quality and the heart of the of the Super Falcons and you know just a, a very fantastic performance to take us top of the group. Um, we couldn't have asked for more at this stage of the tournament, honestly. You know, um, you, you rightly put it, the spectacular performance that, that, that the girls displayed um, at, the, at, at the game. You know, after conceding, after Egmont got that, Van Egmont got that goal in the, uh, in the closing minutes of the first half, it was, you know, it was such a, real, it was such a uh, you know, burden for the girls. But, you know, it, the, the turnaround was exceptional, which brings me to my next question. We discussed this last weekend, the return of Ajibade Rashidat and Alima to Aide, their impact in that game we really showed. You know, Deborah Monday, you know, um, in the first games showed how brilliant she was on a World Cup debut. But, you know, in stepped the veterans, you know, Rashidat Ajibade gliding through the, um, through, through the tough. And one thing that significantly stood out was when Uchina Kano was having a little bit of um, uh, downtime on the left flank, for some reason, she and Ajibade switched places, which shows, you know, a player, players do understand themselves on the pitch of play. That's one. Two uh, is the fact um, is the fact that Asizat Oshuala came in as a substitute, and the moment she came in, it was the attack that she tried to boost that got us the corner kick, which resulted to the goal before she got her third goal, making her the first African woman to score in three different World Cups. What a, what a spectacular um, record that is joining the likes of uh, Samoa Gian who, who, who have done that. And then finally, Randy Wildom's well, ta tactics. You know, overall, Ajibadi's return, Oshuala's impact, and Wildom's tactics. You know, how how did these three um, parts come together to make us I mean, a well-oiled machine against the Australians? 
I mean, first, I'll start by giving kudos to the to the coach, Randy Wardrum. You know, he's somebody that has taken a lot of stick um, and received a lot of, of insults, you know, from Nigerian fans and even people in the media um, because they've just not really felt like he knew what he was doing. But I must say, you know, in the two games that we've played at the World Cup so far, the man has really shown that he has a plan and the players are playing to his plan and is achieving positive result for us. Um, he always said it that he needed to get a solid result against Canada, which he did. And then he went into the game against Australia, knowing that we could get a result, but at the same time remaining compact at the back. Um, I, it was almost as if we had a crystal ball right? because we spoke about this um, last week. And, yeah, we did. Um, just like I thought it was going to happen was the way <laughs> it happened with the return of um, Harimatu and Idea and Rashid Alajibade. You know, like I said, Ainde will come in to show up the midfield, will give Christine Uchebe more of an opportunity to play from box to box. And then, of course, um, Rashida does what Rashida does. You know, she's that um, creative player who can hold the ball, who can drive, who can beat players and create opportunities for for the team, you know, I mean, the only thing that was missing from Rashida's performance in that game was a goal for herself. But we saw the impact that she made, you know, not only working in attack, but also coming back to help the team in defense. If you watch from our defensive set pieces, she was like the first player, you know, blocking almost every cross that was coming in, making clearances. You know, their impact was was highly felt in, in, the, in the team. And, you know, um, it's something that when you have your best players, you always have a good chance of of achieving a positive result. And that's what we saw um, with the Super Falcons on that day. And then with Oshuala coming off, off the bench, um, you know, there's one thing in football, when it, when it works so well for you as a coach like that, it's like a masterstroke. Everybody gives you credit. Oh, you're the best coach in the world. Um, the coach did an interview before the game, or after the game, rather, and he said that, you know, Asisa wanted to start, but she's been nursing um, a long-term injury that she's had. And he just told her, you know what, Asisa, I want you to sit on the bench for this one. And you'll come on in the six, eight minutes when it matters and you'll make an impact. You know, he said he just had a feeling that that was how it was going to work. And what a feeling it was for him, you know, what an impact it was for Asisa Doshuala. Um, she came off the bench, you know, two minutes, I think, or so after she came off the bench, we got the second goal, and within another five minutes, you know, she's scoring that goal. Um, it's, it's, it's a thing of when you have a player as dangerous as Oshuala on the pitch, regardless of whether she's in full fitness or she's in her best form, it adds a little bit of pressure to the opposition defense because they know the kind of quality that she has. And it was a, you know, nice lofted ball from Tony Payne. And unfortunately, you know, um, the um, Australian defender was under pressure. And I know she felt Oshuala breathing down her neck. You know, that's why she misread the play. And then into the empty net, almost the recreation of her goal in 2019 yeah, against... exactly. Um, almost almost Korea. a replica. You know, um, fantastic goal. You know, she took off her shirt, going wild. You know, um, <laughs> it was a it was a wonderful moment for us, you know, and I'm glad that we're able to hold on to the to the win. You know, um, solid solid um, performance by the by the head coach and by those players for sure. Undoubtedly, a solid performance by the Super Falcons and the coach. Well, finally, let's let's bring me to my final question, um, Ayo, and which is very very which is the most important part of it. We are playing Ireland next, a team who who have already been eliminated and, and they're probably one of the worst people to play, a team that's already been knocked out who has nothing to play for. And so mm. uh, at the top of the table, we are leading the log with four points um, um, in conjunction with Canada and with and Australia with three points. Now let's review our potential threats coming into, into the knockout stages and going into, into the... Uh, into the semis throughout the knockout stage. No, when we scale through the knockout stages, our potential threats in the knockout stage, round of 16, are either England, um, Denmark, or China. Or, and then when we move into the, into the, into the final rounds, we, might, we have the potential of either facing um, France, Brazil, Colombia, and the likes of them. You know, so tell me, how far do you think the Super Falcons can go? Um, honestly, um, I know that obviously I'm Nigerian, so I have a little bit of bias. Um, but on the, on the on the basis of what we've seen in the two games, I think we can take on almost any team in this tournament. You know, we're playing like a very well-oiled machine. Um, the girls are giving everything. They're compact in defense. And I think, you know, obviously for the players, they, you know, they have to take it one step at a time. But we, the fans, we're allowed to dream, you know, and we're allowed to hope and believe that, you know, this can even be a, a semi-final appearance for us. Yes. Um, if we finish top of our group, we'll face the second um, place in, in Group D, which likely, to, I think, will probably be Denmark. Um, from what I've observed from both teams, you know, Nigeria and Denmark in this tournament, I see no reason why we can't go into a game against Denmark believing that we can win. You know, even if we face England, um, with the kind of confidence that we have, with the kind of talented players that we have, you know, we'll go into that game believing that we can pull out a positive results uh, and you know um, knockout stages is a different ball game altogether one game if you don't play your best day you lose and you're out of the tournament um so you know i'll be i'll be someone here that says i, I dare to dream and see us you know achieving a semi-final um a semi-final performance you know for the first time in a world cup we able to go that far um, i think we have the, the talented players to do it you know we have the hearts to do it 
And against all odds, you know, um, this might just be the year that the Super Falcons will really, really show the world what they are made of. And then FIFA can finally lift us off of that 40th ranking and take us maybe into the top 10, I believe. <laughs> All right, then. I, I'm such a believer like you, Ayo, and I'm such a dreamer like you also. I also believe that this might be our year to do, to do the best that we can. We might actually be the Moroccos of, um, of, the, of, the, women's, of the men's football that, that, you know, that they, they showed their strides in the yeah. men's World Cup last year. I believe we can also go as far as that. This is a fine place to leave it, Ayo. Uh, let's see how the Super Falcons progress. We'll also still come back to review more. Thank you very much, Ayo. Thank you very much, Ayo, for having me on your show. Always All right, a then, pleasure. My pleasure. Well, there, there you have it. That has been Ayo T. Ogala, a sports marketer and the founder of um, Eagles Tracker, reviewing the Super Falcons' chances and how far can they go. Well, we, so you know it, on Monday, the Super Falcons will be playing their final game against Ireland, um, seeking a, a table topping um, progression into the round of 16 with potential threats against England or Denmark. Well, that's all I have for you in the sports segment of the weekend show. We'll still have more on the weekend show. Stay tuned. Bye bye.